In numerous cultures around the world, men urinate standing. But in Northern Europe, it's not unusual for men to urinate sitting. For the moment, Nomex toilets are only found in Northern countries. Beyond the restraints of culture, concentrated urine badly coats drains with scale. However, this technology offers many advantages. It stops nitrogen from urine entering the water supply and also means that precious fertilizing elements like phosphorus can be recovered. An organic fertilizer made from recovered urine is sold in Switzerland and Germany. In France, some vineyards are testing fertilizer made from human urine. But there again, there are restraints to the reuse of urine. Although it is quite sterile, it may contain medicine residue. Anyway, the population often are psychologically opposed to using our own matter for growing food. This repugnance appeared quite recently because for a very long time, human and animal excrement were the main fertilizers used in agriculture. But the youngest amongst us have forgotten that. Even though the concept is an old one, dry toilets to recycle human waste have always had fervent supporters. For a long time, dry toilets were that, a poo, a little sawdust. Then we went on to something else. Dry toilets of today, on the contrary, are now at the forefront of innovation. In these new generation dry toilets, fecal matter is taken on a moving belt and stocked in this reservoir. Urine descends by gravity and is stored in this container. In reality, the storage for urine and excrement are hermetically sealed boxes. A powerful ventilation system renews the air and removes the smells which used to haunt old dry toilets. Go on, pee, Bernard. Urine is collected and directly reused, drop by drop, to fertilize nearby plants. This type of toilet is installed in major urban centers, notably Paris. These toilets are now common in collective spaces. Concert halls, ski stations, sports complexes. Some private citizens have taken the step too. So Christian, how long have you had this put in? Well, a bit over two years. What sort of savings have you made? Well, listen, it's about 30 cubic metres a year. That's 10 cubic metres per person. That's a lot. In Germany and in countries of Northern Europe, the separation principle is already used in housing. In France, some pioneers are clearing the way. So nowadays we manage to install this type of toilet even in housing blocks, notably with our first try at Dol de Bretagne, where there were 24 units, that's 60 people who are to be equipped with this sort of separation system, which permits treatment of all the waste of 60 people. In terms of Dol de Bretagne, it's public housing management in charge of the project. And so that proves that even institutions are starting to change, which we can be happy about. Fecal matter is collected once every six months from the unit to be composted outside the building. The urine is collected in the basement, takes up about the space of a car park place, and is reused by a local market gardener, which means that it's completely possible nowadays to put separating dry toilets inside buildings, even on several levels. This technology is particularly adapted to new urban zones constructed at the edges of towns and close to fertilizer users. Difficulties in stocking and transporting waste remain a real restraint in towns.
water saving and reuse on site of products recovered are the themes which current research is investigating. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation supports the work of several scientific teams which are exploring different ideas. Notably, solutions for urban zones are being studied, which don't have sewers at all, and where basic infrastructure is defective or even completely absent. In England, the team of Angela Parker from Cranfield University have developed toilets that are totally autonomous, function without water, and produce their own energy without waste. The nanomembrane toilet has a rotating bowl which acts as a flush, which keeps odours trapped within the toilet and stops them from spreading. The excrement falls on a trapdoor that pivots on its axis when the user has finished. The base of the toilet is then blocked and no smell can escape. When you go to the toilet um, in Europe, you flush the toilet and your waste is transported to a sewage treatment works. And there's lots of different processes that happen in a sewage treatment works. When you use a nanomembrane toilet, all those processes are contained in a small footprint unit and converts it into uh, clean water and ash. A worm screw sends the solid excrement into a mini combustion chamber which produces energy by reducing it to ashes. The liquids are filtered by a nanomembrane with extremely small pores, a millionth of a metre, which let only water pass and hold back substances carried in the urine. At the exit, Perfectly sterile water is obtained, which can be used for gardening and other domestic uses. So the toilet is designed to work in low-income cities where there are no sewers, so it needs to work without access to water or electricity because those are often scarce in those areas. And the only thing the user has to do is uh, open and close the lid and empty the water on the, and the ash. Another highly qualified team from well-known Caltech, the California Institute of Technology, has designed a recycling system. A French startup has developed the Caltech technology to industrialize and commercialize ecological toilets that are water autonomous. I'm going to present you autonomous toilets which don't use water and, on the contrary, produce water from urine. There are no chemical byproducts, all excrement is recycled on site. These are WECO toilets, normal water toilets. And behind this is technology. The urine and excrement come to this septic tank, where they're biologically treated, which allows the decomposition, reduction and digestion of solid waste. Liquid goes into the electrolytic reactor. You can see the little bubbles, which is the process that allows the destruction of bacteria and water clarification. And this leads to clear treated water such as we're used to which is then filtered and sent to a tank to be reused for flushing the toilet indefinitely in a closed circuit. Like in swimming pools, electrolysis creates chlorine by combining wastewater, salt and electricity. This chemical reaction produces clear and sterile water which can be reused indefinitely. Finally, faecal matter can be recovered at the bottom of the tank to be transformed to compost or energy. At the moment, the first toilets like this are in service in public structures or installed in private homes that aren't connected to the sewer system. Water in France isn't expensive, so we have a tendency to look upon it as an inexhaustible resource. We're connected to sewers everywhere. In the 80s, everything was supposed to be connected to the network. That's why we now say, free ourselves from that. 
We have all the infrastructure, but on the one hand, the water resource isn't inexhaustible. The rivers which bring our drinking water will drop by 10 to 40 percent. Also, maintaining a treatment system is extremely expensive. And in environmental terms, there are a lot of leaks estimated at up to 20 percent. So our technology will be useful for tomorrow in France, but it is useful already right now in developing countries where there is no sewer network. 